Hey, this is Arthur Robinson Jr. I am the creator of PowerfulInterviews.com. I am the creator of Audio Secrets Training Event. Dot com. I want to welcome each and every one of you to this powerful video. In this video, you're going to experience life-changing information that you will not find anywhere else. I have secured an incredible interview with a great friend of mine, international speaker, best-selling author. His name is Brandon Steiner. Brandon Steiner is the founder of Steiner Sports Marketing Company. So in this interview, Brandon is going to reveal inside secrets how you can create your own UVP. UVP stands for Unique Value Proposition. How you can take your unique value proposition to stand out from your competition. Brandon Steiner also break down layman's terms how he developed a powerful, meaningful relationship with a great basketball legend. His name is Magic Johnson. Brandon Steiner also break down layman's terms how he started his business back in the mid 1980s with four thousand dollars to his name and now his business which is Steiner Sports Marketing Company generates fifty million dollars in revenue and he employs one hundred employees and how you can do the same blueprint to take your business to the next level Brandon Steiner also break down layman's terms about how you need to reuse relational capital to expand your brand on a local level or a national level or an international level and much much more. Brandon Steiner also break down layman's terms how he dedicate his second book which is you gotta have balls to his mother and much much more. So remember this is not bullshit information. This is real information that's going to take yourself and your business to the next level but remember you have to implement what you learn. Most wealthy people take advice from other wealthy people. Poor people take advice from poor people. But like Abraham Lincoln said, you cannot help the poor if you are one of them. So right about now, go get your pen and your pad, sit back and relax, and write down some notes. In this interview that I'm going to reveal to you with my great friend, international speaker, founder of Steiner Sports Marketing Company, Brandon Steiner. This interview is going to change your life. So check it out. Today, I have a wonderful person on the call. And he's a great friend of mine. His name is Brandon Steiner. And for those that don't know Brandon, let me explain to each and every one of you about this incredible, powerful man. Brandon Steiner lived for the summer days when he could scrunch together enough change to make the subway trip to the Yankee Powerful Stadium by the cheapest ticket available in the brass of his favorite baseball team for a couple of hours. He is the best-selling author of two powerful books. The first one he published in 2003, and it is called The Book, The Business Playbook. It is a, a powerful book, and I highly recommend that you invest in that book. And we're going to jump into today with his other powerful book that he contributed to his mother, you got to have balls. Brandon Steiner is the owner of Steiner Sports Company, and his business generates $40 million in revenue, and he is a marketing commentator and a professional speaker, and he talks regularly on CNBC, CNN, MSNBC, and ESPN, and that is an awesome, impressive resume. Without further ado, I'd like to welcome the one, the only, the powerful Brandon Steiner to the call. Well, how you doing? It's great to be here. It's a beautiful day. And uh, I'm here for you, and uh, hopefully I can share a few uh, shekels of wisdom. Well, I'd like to thank you, Brandon, for taking time out of your busy schedule to educate me and the listeners worldwide about your powerful book, You Gotta Have Balls. I gladly appreciate it. 
No, I'm ha- happy to do this, and uh, always great to be with you today. And uh, hopefully, be the first of many conversations we're going to have because, you know, the reality is there's so much to talk about. <laughs> it really is. So much to think about. But anyway, uh, where, where, where are we going today? Where, where, let's go. Let's start the journey. To anyone listening on this show, I highly recommend go and get your pen in your pad right now. Brandon Stein is going to break down layman's terms about his two powerful books, You Gotta Have Balls, and his other powerful book that I highly recommend that you go and invest in, The Business Playbook. Now, what I'd like to know, Brandon, and can you explain to the listeners in layman's terms, who is the powerful Brandon Steiner? How long have you been in your powerful industry, and what is your expertise? And can you break down layman's terms so the listeners fully understand what inspired you to write this powerful book, You Gotta Have Balls? Well, first of all, um, there's two things to think about here. What inspired me is... My mom, and the second book is really dedicated to her. It's her inspiration and all the lessons I learned. So this, you, you think I mean, I'm a sports guy, and in every sense of the word, Steiner Sports has been around for 26 years. So um, the second book was really about, well, you know, I think about when you think about where you are today, a lot of it has to do with who raised you and where you were born and, and your neighborhood and your community and, and what that was about has a big, big impact on who you are. So. Uh, in layman's terms, um, you know, I have, a, I have a pretty large sports marketing company. We do sports promotions. Uh, we have a collectible licensing. If you go on SteinerSports.com, we have thousands of items we've created. We market and promote hundreds of different athletes over the last 20 years and, and do it on a regular basis. You wouldn't know our name from that because a lot of that is silent branding. But, you know, if you were at a golf tournament and an athlete's there, you know, that's the kind of thing that we would bring an athlete or we do media tours with players to promote products and advertising and commercials and trade shows and all things like that and then speaking engagements. So we're pretty full service when it comes to athlete marketing. What makes us unique is we have these unbelievable relationships with the Derek Jeters, Eli Mannings, Notre Dame, the Yankees to create collectibles and licensed products uh, with, with not only those guys but many, many others. And that's kind of what Steiner Sports is about. That's the company and the empire, so to speak, that I've built up and, and created over the last 25 years. And it's really just a, a dream come true for me. We have about 100 employees uh, that, that go about this uh, every day. Uh, we're about a $50 million company. And uh, we, we love what we do. It's, it's a lot of fun. You learn a lot uh, from the players and the kind of, you know, some of the greatest players in the world, whether it be Muhammad Ali, Eli Manning, or Peyton Manning, or uh, a Mariano Rivera, or a Walt Frazier, or a whoever it may be. And uh, that's a little bit who I am. I mean, we have a, a very dynamic website that, that really helps people remember some of the great moments in sports. At the same time, you know, we really do help companies grow, and we do help sales people and sales groups grow. Whether I'm going to speak to those groups, which I do all over the country, or whether we're using our our items as incentives, you know, where you get a chance if you sell X amount of stuff to win prizes or a chance to golf with a player or meet a player or win tickets to a game or go to a Super Bowl game. All those kinds of things are stuff that falls under the Steiner umbrella and what I've created over the last years. Just a quick thing on the books. The Business Playbook is a really a good to great book. It's a book that, you know, if you're looking to kind of re-up, if you're looking to go from good to great, you're kind of stuck. You know, if you're a person who wants to do more, do better, it's a very simple, very simple book that you can really take some really good nuggets out of and put it to play. One of my big knocks on a lot of the business and self-help books are, they read well, they, they sound good, but it's hard to relate to them. It's hard to go put some of those things into play for yourself. The first book is a really easy book to take the nuggets and concepts and say, you know, I could do that. Matter of fact, if that guy did that, I definitely could do it. And they're really easy uh, sales and business concepts to help businesses or help you either do better where you are or force you to maybe grow and go. And then the mm-hmm. second book is you got to have balls. It really just tells the story of how I built this thing from the time I was 10 uh, to now and how I built Steiner Sports. I started with $4,000 and how I kind of built this company up and all the different stories are, you know, really it's all the grains of the sand is what makes up the beach. 
So it's it's not about one thing or about another. It's about all these little things that occur. And I think the, what you really relate to in that book and, and why it's a great read is that it's true in all of our lives that all the little things that happen to us along the way is really what ends up how you end up with the product and the person you are today. So it's not you know it's not really what you're doing. It, it's, it's what kind of person you are and the relationships and how you approach those ups and downs and those relationships that really forms you and gives you basically the position and, and the place where you are today. And that's really what that book emphasizes and, and brings you to. Mm. Now, how old are you now? 54. Feel great. Probably feel better than I did when I was 40. Uh, you know, I touch on, you know, my, you know, I talk a lot about this in the blog, you know, my, on BrandonSteiner.com, but it's a lot about health and a big part of who you are and how well you do. Most people want to think about how, many, how can I network? How can I sell more? I'm like, well, first thing you want to do is feel better about yourself and be healthy and make sure your energy level is at the highest level it could be. And I think that a lot of people make the mistake thinking, that, let me just go make all this money and then I'll go back and I'll, I'll worry about how I eat and how I exercise later. But the reality is, is in order to go make a lot of money and then be able to spend that money after you make it with some joy, you may want to focus on your diet, your exercise, and your health now, even though you may be in your 20s or 30s or 40s. it does. Your health doesn't get better unless you manage it and you need to manage your your health and manage your energy. And that's something I wish I had learned a little earlier on, but since I've been about 40, I've, I've really gotten into the energy management stuff as far as, you know, I'm not only managing my numbers and my sales and my transactions and my relationships, but I'm managing my health on a day-to-day, -day, week-to-week basis. And it's really important to manage your health. Mm. You mentioned about managing your health because your health is actually your wealth. Yeah. Now, I've seen a powerful video, and you was breaking down layman's terms about the power of relationships and relationship capital. Can you explain to the listeners, and most of my listeners are entrepreneurs and business owners, about what exactly is relationship capital? Well, I mean, the reality is, is the quality of your life. Show me, a, show me a really wealthy man. I'll show you somebody who has a wealth of relationships that are meaningful and, and fruitful. And, uh, you know, the quality of your life really is based on the quality of your relationships. And if you think about, if you really think about where you are, whether you're happy and where you are, a, a lot of it is, you know, you've got some people that you trust and you can communicate and tell people anything. And I think that's what you want with your, your clients and what you want internally with some of your key employees that you work with. And I think when you have, you're in a place where you work, where you have quality relationships internally with the people you work with that you can talk to, that you can trust, you can count on, lean on, you can push, you can pull, give and take, then you're in a very vibrant situation that can grow and grow. Because if you don't have quality relationships, it's very hard to go. It's very hard to grow. And you're probably on not only in the wrong direction, but you're probably sprinting in the wrong direction enthusiastically. Because I see people all the time that are working really hard, but they don't have great quality relationships. They don't have good ones at home, and they don't have good ones in the office. And it's really, really hard to be super successful without having those relationships. And I always feel like, you know, when we talk about relationships and the capital of those relationships, it's, it's all based on trust and based on communication. Show me a great relationship. And it's all based on trust and communication. Somebody you really, really love to count on, it's because you can tell them anything. And it's because you emphatically trust them. So if you think about the quality of your life, it's really based on your ability to trust, have people around you that you trust. And really the quality of life is based on your communication. And the hard part is I think we all get the trust part, you know. Mm -hmm. I just don't know if people really understand how complicated it is these days to communicate. Because there are so many ways to communicate. And there are a lot of different people that want to be communicated differently. So all communication is not equal. Definitely tweet that one out. But, you know, definitely write that down. All communication is not equal. And I think that there are still some people that need to see you, see your words, see you talk. There's some people that don't want to see you. They just want to text or an Instagram. And there are people that want to have that little extra relationship as far as, um, you know, Facebook or a tweet or, or, you know, those kinds of things. So, you know, it's not easy these days to keep the level of communication up. 
and stay with people. Uh, when, when I say it's not easy, meaning to figure out what's the best way for a particular person, it actually is easy because there's so many ways besides phoning somebody, writing somebody a handwritten letter, you know, all those things. Mm. So, you know, all those things, you know, are, are all critical. I mean, as far as leading to a quali- great quality of your life, whether it be your overall life, your business life, your personal life, you got to kind of do a little inventory on your relationships. And you got to start thinking about, am I, communi- am I a communicator? You know, because that's such a big part of leading to a great, great quality of life is, are you somebody who's communicating? Are you sending out the notes? Are you, are you doing are you using your email and your Facebook to let more of the massive, maybe more of your larger part of your relationships, they don't have to all be the most intimate relationships, but at least you're letting people know where you are, where you stand, what you're up to, what you're doing. And I think the people that could do that the best are living more vibrant lives. And, and it's not about hiding behind your Facebook, because sometimes you still got to show up and look somebody in the eye and be able to communicate that way. And you still got to be able to pick up the phone. And the head down generation these days is, is just a, it's a real battle now, but you've got a, a generation of people that don't want to pick up the phone, that don't want to handwrite a note, and you've got a generation that insists that you do. And it's, it's going to be interesting to see who wins out here over the next five or ten years, whether we can get the head down generation, these kids in their teens and 20s, to actually break down a little bit and break a little bread and write a note, and whether we can get the, head, the, you know, the baby boomer generation, we get them to really, co- you know, to kind of compromise and maybe get on Facebook and maybe do a little more of the texting and the Instagramming. Hmm. You mentioned you said all communication is not created equal. And I always say that communication is the key ingredient when you're interacting with people. Also, in this to that, communication is the channel through which life is conveyed. Now, communication is very powerful, especially when you build in great relationships. And I know that you cut a deal with the Yankees. Can you explain to the listeners the power of relationships and how, what was the blueprint? in order for you to cut that deal with the Yankees? Well, you know, it's funny. And that's an obvious question. I think that a lot of people, when they see me, and they know they've got this this relationship called Yankee Steiner, which has definitely been a blessing, and it's been amazing to be able to partner up with one of the great brands. And uh, it was the first deal of its kind. And, and it really was a partnership with the Yankees and I where we, we did all these different promotions and created all these products together with game-used jerseys and the dirt and the bases and, you know, you have the Yankee, uh, Brian Cashman and Lon Trost and Randy Levine, really, who had the foresight to trust me to put something like this together. We are taking actual physical items from the clubhouse and the field and making them fan-friendly so that fans can buy them and, more importantly, get things that they know that are real and authentic. It's amazing. But I want to stop you for a minute, and that's, you know, that's, you know, that's the gravy. But, you know, to go cook the meal, to get to that point, it's value proposition. And I think the way I was able to get that deal done starts when I was about 12. I was at a newspaper route, and I would go around, and I was, there was a contest. Whoever can open up the most uh, accounts would win a box of candy bars. So I'd go around, and I was trying to get anybody to buy papers that I could. And wow. finally, I knock on this woman's door. She's about 70 years old. And I said, ma'am, would you get the newspaper from me? And she was like, no. And I saw a stack of papers in the house. And I said, well, why? I mean, it's the same price you get it from me, whether you get it from the corner store. I'll be there by 7 a.m. You don't have to worry. And she's like, yeah, but then i got to tip you. So I went home. And I said to my mom, I said, can you believe this? This woman, we want to get the paper delivered on the same price because she had to tip me. And my mother said, you know, listen, when you're selling something other people have, you got to differentiate yourself. Mm. Now, anybody that's listening in there knows we're all in a position where we've had to sell something. You know, you're all nodding your heads. If you ever had to sell something that everyone else or other people were selling, you're now competing with people that are selling the same thing. You know, how do you differentiate yourself? So, you know, I go back, I'm knocking on doors, I go back and knock on the woman's door, and I said, ma'am, she said, Sonny, I told you I don't want to get the newspaper delivered. I said, yeah, but I just got to ask one thing. When it's blizzarding outside, it's a heat wave, storming, the weather's horrible, I don't think it's a good idea for a woman of your age to go outside and have to worry about getting the newspaper. Also, if I bring you milk on Wednesdays and Sundays, 